Welcome to Powering Through Life, and I'm your host, Teresa Sims. Each week on Powering Through Life, my guest and I will discuss a special topic that is close to their heart. Together, we will explore the challenges they have faced in life and learn what strategies and tools they have used to power through their life. So welcome to Powering Through Life. Hi, and welcome to Powering Through Life. And today I have a really amazing guest with me and a dear friend, and her name is Brenda Pierce. And Brenda is known as the Empowered Nurse. Now, what a title that is. She has literally touched thousands of lives over her 37-year nursing career and has been at the bedside of many of the most difficult situations that life has to offer. However, it was Brenda's own near-death health crisis that totally changed her life. Brenda gives hope and transformation at any point in life, and, and it really is possible. She's also a TV show producer and host, international best-selling author and podcaster, which we also have in common. We have so much in common, and it's so lovely we can do this together. Brenda loves to, t- to say, Fill your life with bliss and watch your world change. What a beautiful saying that is, Brenda. Welcome to Powering Through Life. Thank you, Teresa. It's always a joy to spend time with you, whether it be online or in person. So it's great to be a part of your audience today. Thanks. I'm so happy we get to do this again. And I know we've done this a couple of times, but you know, so many things change and life is ever flowing and ever changing. and we have so many different situations that we're involved in and i know in the past few years you had a really life-altering health crisis so would you like to talk to us about that and share your story behind that well thank you very much for allowing me the opportunity and and may this inspire and bless and bless somebody out there who needs a change because you know the interesting thing is that um when I was in nurse's training in my second year, I lost my father and he was 48 years of age and he died of heart disease. And I remember the mantra that was always running in the background. If I make it to 48, I'll be great. Make it to 48, I'll be great. And um, through the ensuing years, the uh, 20, 27 years to get to 48 uh, from that day when my dad died, um, you know, I got married, found love, um, had children. Um, win and lose in life and everything in life happens and it happens to us rather quickly and life can pass us by and it was when I was in my 47th year that life really knocked on the door and remember what uh, you know be very careful what you wish for okay so you remember that mantra was going on in the back of my mind and what happened was I was watching a show where they were talking about ovarian cancer and I was by myself, the kids were outside running around playing. It was summertime, and I was down on the sofa in the basement lying where it was nice and cool, and this show came on. And you know what? I had been having some kind of womanly issues. I was, you know, thinking maybe it's just me getting older. I don't know. But all of a sudden, I looked down at my abdomen, and one side of my abdomen was actually raised up. And I went, oh. And, uh <sighs> You know, the show was there for a reason. Um, It was waking me up to the possibility that there may be something wrong. And um, so I made an appointment and uh, had an ultrasound and uh, things did not look good. Um, I was a gestational diabetic uh, from my first pregnancies and, uh, you know, kind of told, you know, watch what you eat, but you really don't when you don't have that you know, real responsibility and life was creeping and going and kids were busy. And it turned out I had to have a CT scan. And yes, they found masses in my abdomen. I had had a partial hysterectomy years before. And um, so what had happened between the diabetes and um, not paying attention to some of the issues I was dealing with, I had 15 pounds of ovarian cysts removed from my abdomen through emergency surgery. And, um, and one of the, um, so it was growing like really prolifically turned out it was benign. Thank goodness because of, um, the type of growth that was happening, it was benign. 
you know, thankfully. And um, so one of the surgeons had to have another surgeon in because they were concerned about adhesions to other parts of my organs down below. And sure enough, one of my ureters was severed to my right kidney. Um, and um, I ended up having to have stents and um, all kinds of corrective surgery. And, um, you know, that was really an eye opener. Like I said, watch what you wish for. Watch the programming that's going on in your mind. Because what you think about, you really do bring about. And after going through the surgery and, and all the reparative stuff that had to go on, I had reached age 48. And I made it through that threshold. And in doing so, what happened was it was like every day after that was like I made it to 48 and now I can be great. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's been like borrowed time ever since. And yes, I've had some more health setbacks and things like that. But what I really want to bring through to your audience is that at any one point in time, yes, things happen. Our internal programming happens. There's something called the law of epigenetics, which is this whole thing. What you bring about you, it's think about you bring about. And in this case, you really are master of your destiny when it comes to your health and well-being. So things happen to us. People say things to us that they didn't mean to hurt us with. But we internalize it. And that internal dialogue affects ourselves at the cell level. Mm -hmm. Our mitochondrial DNA, which is environmental, is affected by the world around us. And if we um, may have like some predispositions like uh, heart disease, which is in my family, but um, one of the things is I'm not like my dad and grandfather who died young um, of heart disease. They smoked, they drank, they ate fatty foods, but our medical system tends to like to lump us into the same categories. And if you continue to think, oh, okay, this disease is in my background, and um, so I'm at risk. So again, like that internal programming years ago, that um, that was at play. And we are totally, totally victims of our own um, demise. Our mind really is um, something we really have to safeguard and watch. So epigenetics, I want everybody to look that up and get familiar with that which means that if I did the same thing, yes, I would have the same outcomes, right. but I chose differently. And so and there you go. That's my story. Well, it's okay to be aware of what happened in your familiar history, right? You do need to be aware of it. But like you say, it's whether you program that into yourself that you're going to be destined to end up the same way or not. That's our choice. And like you say, it's our mindset that put comes into play so had yeah. you must have at some point in time reset that programming to, i did yeah to say yeah. that i am not going to be that i'm not going to end up like that i'm not i am choosing to not have that same history repeat itself so well this is so true because if you say i am and whatever you say after that like i am diabetic i am um you know um have heart disease or I am going to have heart disease that I am dot 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 whatever you put in that dot 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 is your reality yeah very true and uh, you know I would totally agree with that because you know we look at what's gone on in our past and we can say uh, that did happen but however I choose I am not you know, it's that word, that simple N-O-T word that you put in there that's going to transform how you think and believe and feel and react to life situations. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the mind only responds to the thoughts we think and the pictures we create in our mind. Mm -hmm. And so if we want to have a different reality, imprint different suggestions in our mind and watch your reality change. You know, it is possible. It doesn't mean that what you are today is the way you have to go or be in the future. It's interesting because a few years ago, I actually had a psychic reading. And this person, based on where I was at at that time, could tell me where I was going. For instance, I was a, um, a Mary Kay representative for a very, very short time. Loved the products and um, uh, I was fast tracking to head towards that pink Cadillac. 
Wow. And yes, and I had not said anything to this this um this psychic, but based on where I was then, she could see that pink Cadillac. But what happened was I was derailed. Um, a person who was uh, promoting me and and um, leadership um, um, towards me and and that sort of thing came down with breast cancer. And it was during my first year, and I was subsequently decided to get out. I wanted to, you know, I didn't feel I was supported as well because she couldn't support me. Right. And so I got out of Mary Kay. So you see, this is the thing is, when you go for a psychic reading, they can read your energy and they can see where you're going if that trajectory stays true. So the same with our health. If we stay on the same track, yes, we are going to have those, those um, outcomes. So at any one choice point in your, your reality, you can change your reality. And that's so cool. And I'm living proof of that. And the more I've studied it, the more that I can see that um, this is definitely, you know, something that each and every one of us has a choice. And that is, we can change our reality. And that's Absolutely. so cool. It is. And it, it's so remarkable. I mean, you know, you look at uh, both of our families, they were hardworking farmers. They ate wrong, but they ate how they thought was right, you know, the heavy meals so that they could go and have the energy to work it off. And they did that, however, when they included alcohol and smoking and all that other sort of aspect into their lives, it changed that dynamic for them. And we, you know, we're, we were raised in the same aspect and the same environments and, you know, the hard work and the, the eating, but we've come so far in learning that our choices define who we are. And, you know, I applaud you in what you've done because you have transformed your present, your future, and stepped away from that negative past that was heading you down into one direction. So right. how did you do it, Brenda? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> um, you know, question. and well, the thing is though, too, the mind is another wonderful thing. What you think about, you bring about. So, you know, as we say the bad things and we can make those choices that you can also bring some amazing things into your life. Yes. So I was constantly, I've been a nurse now for over 37 years, believe it or not. And, um, you know, and um, so I've seen what the medical system has to offer. And somewhere along the way, I just decided that I needed to branch out and do my own thing and not become a cog in the wheel. Because right. again, medical management is not necessarily um, a bad thing, but it can also be stifling and hold you stuck into a treatment cycle that is not necessarily curative. Um, we have the ability, as I said, with our mind to reverse things, but then we need to support that and back that up in terms of bringing things to our life that are going to support our choices, make us feel good in this meat suit, because there's nothing worse than feeling aches and pains and feeling your body every day. Actually, the idea that aging is uh, decrepancy and breaking down is a fallacy. It really is. Our bodies are meant to be seamless and, and we're unless you have trauma um, or some kind of uh, catastrophic event, event that is going to change your physicality mm -hmm. and um, leave you in a state of some demise or pain, you really should feel ageless, timeless, and painless all through your life. And so it comes down to different things. So what I have found, and, and as I alluded to before, I was diagnosed with gestational diabetes and I had to deal with it. And um, at various points in my life, I've either been on medication or insulin, um, but I have learned how to reverse the process by really getting in tune with, and this isn't for everyone, this is not medical advice, but this is my journey I'm sharing. So I just want to be clear about right. that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, is, it is, it does. It comes down to your fitness level, your emotional level, your, um, um, your spiritual level. And what you do to nourish those three aspects of your life is very key. So I found uh, drinking alkalinized water because disease does not exist in an alkaline state. So tap water, you can get it tested and you can, there are various things out there you can do to alkalinize your water uh, because we are more than 70% water and our water holds memories. So 
um, if we are drinking acidic water, it's like drinking battery acid. We know it's very corrosive and destructive. Right. So alkalinized water is really key. Well, you need that pH balance within your system, right? Is, yeah. You do. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the other things is um, reducing, and, and this goes across the board, because if you are prone to cancer or have cancer, carbohydrates, starches, and sugars, if you have any um, inflammatory diseases, um, any chronic diseases, sugar, starch, and, um, and uh, carbohydrates really have to be reduced or eliminated um, as much as you possibly can. Because those things um, feed disease. They cause an acidic um, state as well. So really looking at those three elements and really reducing them. Or looking for alternatives that are of a healthy nature, non-genetically um, altered, um, um, you know, as holistic as possible, as organic as possible, is really important. Mm -hmm. um, I can't stress that enough. Another thing that I have really found is that in our world today, we are why fried. Now, if you, you may or may not understand this or not, Wi-Fi um, is emitting a lot of frequencies that are over and above our natural state of resonance in our body, which is known as the Schumann resonance. Right. It's um, um, 0 0.83 hertz, and which is a sound frequency. And when we are um, exposed to um, lights and hydro and Wi-Fi and microwaves, it is over and above our natural resonance or ability to regenerate ourselves on a healthy level. And so it's really important to disconnect, defrag, um, turn off the Wi-Fi, turn off your routers, turn off your cell phone. Don't sleep with your cell phone in your room next to you or charge it in your room. Make sure your room is as dark as possible to give your body at least six to eight hours of healthy resonance to regenerate on a healthy manner. Mm. So smartphones and smart home devices and uh, the Google um, Alexa things and all this sort of thing are emitting Wi-Fi frequencies which are destructive to our body. They cause um, the cells in our body to flutter and discommunicate in such a way that waste and nutrients are not being um, shared in a healthy manner. It also causes erratic cell growth. And when you think about what cancer is, erratic cell growth, right. there you go. Yeah, exactly. The Canadian Cancer Society actually came out with a document about three years ago saying that 50% of all Canadians will come down with cancer in their lifetime. And that was before the 5G um, frequencies of our newer technology are being unleashed now. So um, I believe that those microwave um, frequencies that are non-ionizing, that are coming from cell phones and are going to be um, a great disruptor to our health and well-being. So that is, um, I can go in that in more depth, but um, I think I've unloaded quite a bit of information here. That's great, though. It's it's really solid information to know because, you know, I'm sitting here listening to you and I'm thinking to myself, I'm paying attention to what's happening within my body right at the moment. And I feel like my heart's going, you know, 90 miles an hour, kind of for the lack of a better expression. But there's nothing wrong with my heart. I, I happen to know that. So is it because of all the electronics that's in my office, the lights that are on, you know, all this sort of thing. And you, you just never know. Like it could honestly be that, that it's reacting negatively with, or my body's trying to avoid having it interfere. Would that be the right choice of words? I think you've got, um, said it in such a simplistic way that I think everybody can grasp that. The thing is, though, um, there's never been cancer of the heart. Why? Because the SA node beats in a rhythmic manner, and, um, and so far to date, um, you know, there hasn't been. But they've actually started to see that rats exposed to Wi-Fi frequencies are developing heart cancer. Mm. So... This is one of the things that when you are being bombarded with all these high frequencies, low frequencies, all kinds of disharmic frequencies from even your plugs right beside you, even if a plug outlet is beside you, is emitting 60 hertz. Wow. So that's with nothing going on plugged into it. 
And even if you have something plugged in, even though the item may be turned off, there is still a current going through there. So they've actually been able to find out that, um, you know, in corridors where there's the big transmitters of hydro, um, hydro corridors that are going through farms and everything, they're finding that if there are hydro cables buried in the farmyard, their cows are getting sick. That yes. if they are milk producing cows, that they produce less milk, that their offspring are coming out weaker, smaller, thicker. So that that, that's even from an agricultural perspective. Yeah, and I know that's been a big deal around our area because there are a lot of dairy farms. And I know for like many years ago, the farmers were really against having any of these. Um, hydro towers or those uh i can't think of the name of them the windmills the the wind jet the turbines the turbine. yeah. yes um in the areas because the the animals are getting sick and they're not like you say as healthy as they could be or producing what they could be which ultimately affects what we eat and ingest and you know it's it's a it's a cycle and you know i i'm also thinking as we're talking about how i'm reacting to the feelings that I'm getting, you and I both, and there's a lot of people that are very sensitive energetically. Mm -hmm. So this could actually disrupt our energy actually. fields for self, right? Yes, 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 exactly. So um, I'm just thinking of Frank Clegg, who is the vice president of Microsoft Canada. Um, he resigned from Microsoft after he realized that his wife was electromagnetically sensitive. Oh. And yes. And uh, so he didn't think that there was anything wrong with the Wi-Fi or with um, our um, advanced technology until his wife got sick. And this was a game changer for him. And he's actually the founder of Canadians for Safe Technology. Um, so it's c4st.com or .org. And uh, you can look it up and you can find out all about, um, um, you know, the, the fact that you know, there, there is a need. There is a need. I'm one of the first people to say this because we're using technology to create this, this interview. Absolutely. Um, and we wouldn't have been able to do this 10, 15 years ago. So there is a need for um, technology. But how, and how can we do this for the safety and well-being of, um, especially like, for instance, our children? Our children are now in Wi Fi school systems where they're exposed up to six hours of wireless technology. Right. And uh, there's more um, learning disabilities. There are more kids that are less able to focus because that's one of the things that brain fog is one of the electromagnetic sensitive symptoms. Um, children are going home and they're not sleeping as well at night. Um, their anxiety levels are increasing. And it's because if you think about it, if you are sitting in the middle of an ocean, you would drown. And that's exactly what being exposed to Wi-Fi in excessive amounts is doing to us. It is changing our DNA, our mitochondrial environmental DNA of our cells are becoming more sensitive. And with 5G, we're going into microwaves of energy which has been proven by um, some of the world scientists have gotten together, um, 252, I believe, last count, from all around the world, combined their studies and their research to say that um, the wife ride world we're living in is not safe, very dangerous. And um, we really need to ask, um, they petition the World Health Organization and the um, entire UN to step back and look. And uh, we're basically like the boiled frog right now. You know how a boiled a frog gets put into water and the heat's turned up and he doesn't realize he's cooked until he's done. <laughs> and yeah. That's exactly what's happening. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, we all feel that we need this. And to a limited amount, yes, we should have this because like you say we're doing this interview we depend on the internet and the computers and all our cell phones every day but we also need to have balance we need to incorporate balance into that and our children especially like you say because now it's in the schools they can't get away from it they come home and they're on it they they you know the they're in the cars and they're watching videos it's just 
it's what it is it's, it's gotten um, you know the the lure of it and the glamour of it and the ease of it all has the price for instance um, with um, with children in particular well basically the last safety studies on um, on cell phones was done over 20 years ago here in Canada and even then using men with full-grown thick skulls they were over six feet tall over 200 pounds they were military personnel they found then with the older oldest generation of cell phones that a half an inch is is the least amount of distance away from the head to be safe and that is scary because there have not been any further safety testing done and if you um, are able to look at the contracts on your um, phones and, and read the fine print which none of us do you would realize that they do spell that out and yet people more and more I know <laughs> nurses will wear their cell phones in their bras right um, you go to any gym women have them tucked in they have actually been able to locate breast tumors growing in the region where the cell phone was tucked. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. So this is true. This is not, this is not hysterical, you know, no. scariness, but this is the truth. Yeah. Where do men wear their cell phones? In their pockets. And testicular cancer is on the rise. Now, for breast cancer, the high risk rates, they say, are people 50, women 50 plus. And yet, that is a fallacy. We get um, our screenings and mammograms, but um, the radiation and the squish and the pressure causes more false positives and false negatives because you, every squish is 47 x-rays of radiation. Oh, my goodness. It's a trauma. The trauma is also one of the causes of breast cancer. And yet, we're missing the point on the highest, the truly highest risk is anybody who has a cell phone. So usually you see 12 year olds, 10 year olds, three year olds. Breast cancer was actually found in a gal, a little girl about three years of age and she ended up having a double mastectomy not too far from us. Really? Yes, yeah. Breast mm -hmm. cancer in boys, men, gynomastitis and, um, and children of all ages are coming down with breast cancer. Men and boys, boys younger and younger, are coming down with testicular cancer. I know of a 12-year-old. I know of a 14-year-old who has testicular cancer. Why? You know, it, I shake my head. I've seen kids um, teething on cell phones. Yes, that's the worst thing. I mean, it's 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 a babysitter. Yeah, and and I've seen it as well. And I mean, you know, I remember the times when the cell. <laughs> Well, we, we date, were dating ourselves when cell phones first came out. You were right about holding it here because they were trying to prove that it was causing brain cancer. There were a lot of people that, you know, there were lawsuits and all those sorts of things because people had these cell phones attached to their ears. And, you know, it, it's personally, I don't use my cell phone for calls <laughs> because I don't like having it anywhere near. I do chat with a friend from Poland on it, but I always use speakerphone. Anytime That's someone calls the house, I use speakerphone. So I do not like having the phone attached to me. And it, mind you, we have computer equipment in the house, obviously. But, you know, I think great points that you make are turning it off, getting away from it, reducing the amount of charge that is unnecessary and harmful to us it's it's great information brenda thank you so much like this oh, is no. incredible i think this is the kind of conversation um every needs to be happening in every home yeah. and um you know um safe technology how can we do this like i'm using my hand my phone right now to do this with my hands off i'm using a, an earbud um not bluetooth bluetooth also has a lot of ramifications to it so, um, you know, it's a, t a kitchen table conversation that needs to be happening. And really, um, I remember a few years ago, my daughter had a 
Samsung 5, and those were the ones that were catching on fire. Yes. She had it in her bedroom. I wasn't aware of all this stuff like I am now. So, of course, hindsight is always 2020. But she had one of those phones. She had it charging next to her head, and it started on fire. Her oh. mattress, actually, she had a foam mattress. It melted in, and there was, like, the fire starting. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <sighs> you know unbelievable so, like I know we need alarm clocks and all those sorts of things but you know I still prefer the old-fashioned <laughs> I do have one of the old ones with the wind up and the bells on the top and yeah mm -hmm. the crank it up and if you forget to wind it well you know things happen but you know my husband happens to be the one that uses his cell phone for his alarm clock and yeah you yeah. know I I don't care for the constant attachment you know, that that's, maybe it's because of the sensitivity to the energy. I don't know. But I, I think that's a factor. But yeah. you know what another another key tip is um, digital dementia. For yeah. all of us that are too attached to our devices and don't think anymore, we're typing everything. Yes. So we've lost the, um, the skill, the talent, the creativity of cursive writing. Yes, there is a, a real creative energy that happens when we write. But when we're typing, we don't have that same connection to the creativity. We're not thinking about the style and flow, taking time to think our words. Um, too much reliance on technology stops us from using our common sense or even thinking abilities. So if we go and do Google search on everything on our phone, we're not using those brain cells in a way that fire, in a way that keeps us cognitively intact. And Digital dementia is a reality and is happening younger and younger as more of our um, offspring and younger generations are attached to it. We're lucky. We had years where we had to pick up a pencil. We had to pick up the phone. We had to um, work in, with our hands and things like that. The younger generations are not. They're wired even in utero. Very true. Because I know a lot of women are playing music to their babies when they're pregnant. I'm still not sure about that. I mean, music is very soothing, but there's different ways of, uh, like you could sing, you could, you know, yeah. all those sorts yeah. of things. The voice yeah. is very yeah. connective. And, you know, you talk about how children are looking up things today. I happen to have, it's, it's put away right now, but I have a dictionary, a Webster dictionary sitting on my desk. And, you know, we still have sets of encyclopedias. Yes, the information is so outdated. However, <laughs> there's information in there that is very relevant to us and our world. And well, it's now lost information, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that connection to paper, like you say, you know, it's funny because when I'm doing something, I will write out my notes first. Then I will go to my, my keyboard and then I will type. And it, it's just, I need to have that physical contact with paper. Like you say, it's very key. And hopefully it will avoid having, uh, you know, situations happen in my brain uh, because of the brain injury I have from my car accident. It's key that I have those connections to uh, doing tasks differently. So I'm aware of what's gone on and I'm aware of what I need to do to keep the uh, signals firing properly. That's right. Create, keeping that neuroplasticity active yes. and, and um, as pliable as possible for as long as we can Absolutely. is probably the best anecdote we have to dementia. Mm -hmm. And so it's important. Yeah, and the, the woman that I uh, worked with after my car accident is a chronic pain specialist, and she helps you manage and teaches you about brain injuries. And there is a whole series on how, the neuroplasticity of the brain and how you can reteach it, retrain it, show it new pathways, and get, you know, sometimes pathways shut off, but you can bypass those at times. And it's very great information to have and we can keep learning and learning and that's what we should be doing but it's how we go about it and what we choose to learn about that is so key for us right absolutely
Yeah. yeah. So are there any keys, key tips that you'd like to leave us with that can help us with our health and wellness and, and avoiding all this over, over abundance of, um, I guess it's unhealthy energy, isn't it? It's, it, it, it is, it is, it's excessive, it's pervasive and it's, um, colorless, odor, odorless, tasteless. And so we think if we can't sense it, that it must not be there or must be real or the risk is just, you know, just hearsay. But more and more people are starting to speak up. So my premise through the years is that I found that all health is cell health. So anything you do, any vitamins you take, any exercise you do, um, any health regime, if it doesn't start at the cell level, it is not going to have a stickability or a, an ability to help you in the long run because the Wi-Fi actually help um, causes blood to clump. It's called Rouleau formation. And um, you can look it up on, um, on Google and, and YouTube. Rouleau formation is that the blood becomes so sticky and dense, it all clumps together. And when you do that, you think about it, what does blood carry? It carries oxygen, it carries nutrients, and the cells are small enough that are in eight minutes or less, the blood that's pumped from the heart has circulated through the entire body and is ready for exchange and recharge again. So what happens is this rulo formation causes the blood to not um, have the complete surface area to exchange nutrients and waste and operate in improper formation. And sticky blood, clumpy blood, does not get into the microcircuitry of the, of the body. Hence, we're get, um, more and more people are saying that they feel themselves, like we were talking about earlier, um, that they have inflammation, arthritis, chronic diseases that are circulatory based. And so um, what I have found through my studies and my research is pulsed electromagnetic field therapy is key to um, improving circulation, reducing that rouleau formation of blood, and reducing pain. So it's really important for people to really get a handle on what some of the solutions are. And if we can't avoid this Y fried world that we live in, then we have to look at how we can reduce the effects on our body. So pulsed electromagnetic field therapy is a, a MAT system using Tesla technology developed by NASA. This technology was used to get man into space and stay in space for the long periods of time that we are now. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and so with our, our conditions here on Earth being less grounded to the Earth's frequency, that technology is needed now more than ever here on Earth. So it's a, um, a full-length MAT system that you can lay on at least eight minutes 10 minutes twice a day will give you six hours of cells being in healthy harmony back and forth, exchanging waste and nutrients in a healthy manner, improving circulation, reducing pain, and oftentimes reducing some of those things that are affecting the electromagnetic sensitive people and generally us as a whole. Yeah, and I, I can honestly relate to that because you have brought your system to my house uh, <laughs> and let me use it for about a week because I was unable to move from my back injury. And, you know, just using that system that you have for 20 minutes or 30 minutes a day, twice a day, I think I was using it. It actually, in the first few times, got me up and walking. I couldn't even walk across my house in the beginning. You brought the system over and you saw how difficult it was for me to get even on the mat, on the table. Yeah unbelievable amounts of pain and within two sessions I was up and walking and, and the pain was still there mind you but it decreased radically within that week of using that system so there is a lot to be said for that and now I have a question for you you were talking about sticky blood is that and this is from you know someone that's not educated in the medical field is that what causes aneurysms and things like that to happen um, aneurysms are weakness in the wall vessels, so especially the aorta in the stomach, um, in this area from the heart to the um, where the legs are. That's where usually you see an aneurysm. 
okay. and that can be from strain, um, work, poor, um, poor, just poor lifestyle can cause that. Um, a brain aneurysm, of course, is in the brain, and if it blows, it causes a stroke and a massive brain bleed or internal hemorrhage, and, and of course, then that's very devastating as well. Yes. Um, poor circulation, when you think about it, all the, like they say, um, if you were to unravel the blood vessels in a human body, it would encircle the earth three times. That's how oh. much, how much we have inside of us. And so, you know, and we think about the vena cava and the aorta, they're the two largest vessels in the body. And, um, but all the micro circuitry that goes into every organ, every orifice, every membrane, every tissue in our body. It's incredible. It and is. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you can think highway. about it. <laughs> yeah. It's a long, long one, that's for sure. Yeah. And that's just one person, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so um, you know, and, I, and another thing to think about, too, is there are 70 trillion cells in our body, give or take a billion or so, depending on your size and your age and whatever else. But 70 trillion. You know, like that's the U.S. debt right now in one person, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so That's mind-boggling, you know, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. It is. We are very complex beings. And yet we're all, when you take it right down to the base of it all, we're cell charge and we're, um, and we're cells. You know, so neurons and, and protons and, and um, the electrical field charge between two of two cells is like the distance of two football fields in equation to each other. And yet the cells and the sparks and, and all that goes on in that area for just two cells is just mind boggling. Yeah. So when I was a nurse, the very first day we learned about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is man is a psychosocial spiritual being. Yes. And after that, the rest of my two years of training, 37 years ago, 39 years ago, um, basically was dissecting into every, every different discipline and this modality and this, and there was none of this syn synchronicity ever talked about ever again. And yet when we come down to it, we are holistic, Absolutely. body, mind, and spirit. And so, um, and this is where, you know, um, specialties have come up. We used to have a GP who did everything and then we were like shipped off to five different doctors, you know, and, um, and so what I really believe is honing it all down. What can we do at the cell level to improve our, our fluid, our, um, our cell health and well being? And, um, and so bringing it down to very simplistic, it's what you eat or what you choose not to eat. It comes down to emotional health, what you tell yourself, because the mind only knows what you tell it and the pictures you show it. And, um, and cell health is, is getting down to the nitty gritty of um, improving circulation to reduce inflammatory processes in our body. And, um, you know, so there you go. Yeah, that's solid information. So mind, body, spirit, we need to keep those things nourished, healthy and recharged. Because you think about, like you said, the two cells on opposite sides of a football field, the energy that pulls those two together is incredible if we keep them healthy and if we keep these electronic devices at bay as much as possible. So it all boils down to our choice. It does. It yeah. does. That's incredible. And being open to making choices. That's another thing is understanding you do have a choice. Yes. And uh, you don't have to be part of the um, general consensus of, of the mass population around you. You really don't. Exactly. I know a lot of people that are, you know, energy workers or, you know, healers of that genre, for the lack of a better term, that they will actually unplug and step away from as much electronics as they possibly can, at least for a weekend or a couple of days so that they can recharge themselves. and it's so key. It, it, it's very important that we do this and awareness, education, and making choices, healthy choices for ourselves is, I think, the most important things we can do for ourselves. Absolutely. Brenda, do you have a favorite saying that you like to use besides, you know, the mind, body, soul connection? Um, I love that, by the way, and it's so um, in tune to what you do. So is there another one that you like to use? 
Yeah, and this was really a key one. When I figured this out, I, it, it changed. It was a game changer for me. And that is, um, I like Einstein. He says, uh, problems cannot be solved at the same level of thinking that created them. <laughs> Very good. Very good. And that's so true. You have to just expand, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you, Brenda. I, you know, I, I so enjoy our time together and I love the, what you're doing. And I know you're into some, a couple new things that we will come back and talk about the next time. How's that sound? Absolutely. That sounds so wonderful. And it's so nice to be a part of your audience and, uh, you know, continued success always, Teresa. Much love. Thank you so much, Brenda. And thank you, everyone, for listening to Powering Through Life. We will have some more great interviews, but right now I want to thank my incredible guest, Brenda Pierce, for sharing her wisdom. It's so wonderful spending time with you. And I know that, you know, there's some good food for thought here in this interview, and people need to go and check up and learn about what we've discussed and find out and make educated decisions for themselves and for their children, which is so vital. Thank you. That brings to a close another great, inspiring interview on Powering Through Life. Thank you to my incredible guest for sharing your thoughts and wisdoms with our listeners. If you would like to connect with us, go to www.teresasims.com. And there you will also find all the previous segments from many amazing and inspiring people. Remember, don't be shy. Reach out if you have any questions or just leave me a comment. So thank you once again for listening to Powering Through Life.